module one, topic A review, number one. So we have a bunch of data in the form of different letters. The first thing you want to do is you want to tally up the different letters. So if we see how many Ys we have, I'm going to count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have seven Ys. Now Fs, one, two, three, four, five. And Js, one, two. This will help you when you're trying to figure out the ratios below. So what is the ratio of Ys to Fs? I'm going to look at my Ys, then I'm going to look at my Fs. So I know my ratio is 7 to 5. What is the ratio of Js to letters? Well, first I'm going to look at my J, which is 2. And then letters are the total number of letters. So I'm going to have to add 7 plus 5, which gives me 12, and then add on the J's, which will give me 14, which then gives me a final ratio of 2 to 14. What is the ratio of letters to Y's? Well, we just found out our total number of letters on letter B, which is 14. And then Y's, we go back up top, and that is 7. Letter D, what is has the ratio of 12 to 2? Well, we're going to go back up to our data, and we're going to look at it and say to ourselves, which two numbers are going to give us the 12. And if you look, the 7 for the Y and the 5 for the F can give you 12. So it's going to be F and Y, 2, and then the J's because that's the number 2. Number 2, <coughs> Mr. Price decided to make a collage. In the collage, he used 32 pictures, 30 stickers, and 35 words. Remember to circle and underline. What is the ratio of pictures to words? So I'm going to go back to the problem. Pictures to words. So my final ratio would be 32 to 35. What is the ratio of pictures to total items? Well, again, I'm going to start with my pictures, which is 32. And then I have to figure out the total of all of the items. So I'm going to take the 32, the 30, and the 35, and I'm going to add them up together. And that's going to give me 97. So my final ratio will be 32 to 97. What is the ratio of stickers to pictures and words? So again, I'm going to go back up, and I have 30 stickers. And then this word and reminds me to add. So now I'm going to look at pictures, which is 32, and words, which is 35. And I'm going to add my 32 plus 35. That's going to give me a final answer of 67 for the ratio of 30 to 67. Write a ratio, number three, write a ratio for the following description. Patrick ate three times as many chicken nuggets as Nicholas. Well, we don't, it doesn't tell me how many Nicholas ate, but I can tell because Patrick ate three times more, that if Nicholas ate one, then Patrick ate three times that, which would be three. So if I wrote the ratio of Patrick to Nicholas eating chicken nuggets, it would be three to one. If you gave me any other equivalent fraction or um, ratio, that would also be okay. Number four. Sue was making salad dressing with oil and vinegar. For every eight tablespoons of oil, she added five tablespoons of vinegar. What is the ratio of vinegar to oil? So again, I'm going to make sure I circle and underline in the problem, and then I'm looking at what they're asking me, the ratio of vinegar to oil. So I go back, and here is my vinegar. So it's going to be five to eight. Now, number five, describe a situation that could be modeled with the ratio three to two. You're going to describe any ratio that has, for every three of something, there is two of something else. So, you might say, um, you can use food, you can use um, anything in real life situations would really work. So, for every three days, two days are sunny. 
okay? So I'm giving an example, a real life example. I can't say there are three days and two rainy. You're gonna say four every three days, there are two days that are sunny. It's giving me the ratio relationship. Number six, write a ratio for the following description. For every five teaspoons of sugar, you need one cup of flour. So that's just gonna be the ratio of five to one. Number seven, give a ratio with the description of the ratio relationship using the following information. There are seven shelves in the store and there are 45 toys. So for seven shelves, 45. Let's go to the next question, number eight. Pam and her brother both open savings accounts. Each begins with a balance of zero. That's important. For every $9 that Pam saves in her account, her brother saves $2. So determine the ratio to describe the money in Pam's account to the money in her brother's account. So Pam, $9, her brother, $2. So now they're asking us if Pam had $27 in her account, how much money does her brother have? Use a tape diagram to show us to support your answer. So the original ratio is if Pam has $9, her brother has two. Well, we wanna know if Pam, this is Pam, this is her brother, went all the way to $27. So we're gonna give Pam another nine, and for every nine she gets, her brother gets two. Another nine, and her brother gets two. And we would continue this to get to whatever our total number, which is 27. So I know that three nines give me 27, so I can stop there. And that tells me that her brother had two, four, six, dollars. Create another possible ratio that describes the relationship between the amount of money in Pam's account and the amount of money in her brother's account. So we know that the original ratio is 9 to 2 and we just found out above this that another example would be 27 to 6. You can come up with any other ratio that you'd like that follows that pattern and you can use your tape diagram to help you or you can make equivalent ratios. So for example, if I have nine over two, I can multiply or divide by any factor to give me, <coughs> excuse me, an equivalent ratio. So I'm gonna multiply by five on the numerator and five on the denominator. And five is just a random number that I picked. And that's gonna give me 45 tenths. Number nine, there are 16 boys in the sixth grade. The number of girls in the sixth grade is 30. Lonnie says that means the ratio of the number of boys in the sixth grade to the number of girls in the sixth grade is one to three. Is Lonnie correct? Show why or why not. So first we're gonna write the ratio of boys to girls. So my ratio was originally 16 to 30. And Lonnie wants to know if his ratio of one to three is correct. So we're gonna see if these make equivalent ratios. So I wanna see what did I do to get from my 16 to my one? Well, 16 divided by 16 equals one. So I'm gonna do the same to my 30. 30 divided by 16 does not give me three. This means that they are not equivalent ratios and Lonnie is not correct. And the work that I have on here is enough work to show that Lonnie is not correct. Number 10. Alyssa's extended family is staying at the lake house this weekend for a family reunion. She is in charge of making homemade waffles. This actually, and I apologize, should say pancakes. For the entire group. The pancakes mix requires one cup of flour for every three pancakes. Write a ratio to show the relationship between the number of cups of flour and the number of pancakes made. One cup of flour, three pancakes. Determine the value of the ratio. And this is where you're putting it into a fraction and making it into the smallest value possible. So I cannot reduce one third because both one and three are prime. So that is my value is one third. Now I'm gonna use that value to help me fill in these statements. 
the number of pancakes made is blank times the amount of cups flour you need. So if I have pancakes, it's for every three pancakes, it's one cup of flour. So that gives me the ratio of three to one, which then simplifies to just three. The amount of flour needed, one cup of flour, for three pancakes, it's gonna give me the ratio of one third, which cannot be reduced. If Melissa had to make 33 waffles, how many cups of flour will she use? So originally, we're gonna go back to that original ratio, three pancakes for every cup of flour, and I know I want 33 pancakes, so I'm gonna set up an equivalent ratio. 33 times, excuse me, three times 11 gives me 33. Whatever I do to my numerator, I have to do to my denominator. So that would give me 11 over here. But I wanna make sure I'm answering the question, how many cups of flour? So it's 11 cups of flour. Number um, 11, A, B, and C are all just writing equivalent ratios. So they're asking you to give me another ratio that's equivalent to this. So I'm gonna take my ratio, put it into the form of a fraction, and then I'm gonna pick any factor that I wanna multiply by. So something easy to multiply by would be two. Two times two is four, eight times two is 16, and my new ratio would be four to 16. 911, I can do the same thing, but I can choose any number that I wanna multiply by. So let's do three this time. Three times nine is 27, and three times 11 is 33. Now for five thirds, I can multiply by four, just randomly picking another number, and that's gonna give me 20 twelfths.